Good afternoon. The Bible declares that God is no respecter of persons, and he doesn't want us to be either. In James chapter 2, verses 8, 8 and 9, we are even told that, If ye fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye do well. But if ye have respect to persons, ye commit sin, and are convinced of the law as transgressors. Now, when the Bible declares the respect of persons to be wrong, it's talk about having such an elevated opinion of someone that they are receiving a show of favoritism above all others around them. Most Christians understand what the scriptures are speaking of, but this is an easy trap to fall into, both for ourselves and for tolerating it in others without warning them. It may not even be very obvious we're so accustomed to it. Most of the stumbling we see in this area regards those that are rich or otherwise materially successful in a variety of ways. It would include such as actors and actresses, singers, athletes, politicians, doctors or businessmen, and even many pastors who are another type of businessman. If we would take a few moments to honestly consider the examples of those that are rich and successful, we'd have to admit that many of them are openly corrupt or immoral. Yet these are the same ones whose opinion the world so values, and it's only too often that the professing body of Christ also admires them in a star starstruck fashion. But in James chapter 2, we read, Do not rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seats? Do not they blaspheme that worthy name by which ye are called? It hurts me a lot to see supposedly serious interviews with celebrities and asking them questions about topics for which they've had no study or experience. They are being questioned and listened to only because they become popular. They become popular and rich. That's why that we want to hear from them. It's one thing to appreciate or acknowledge talents someone may have, but we should know that those abilities are limited and they cannot be transferred into other other fields or subjects. And the Bible takes quite a contrary view when it comes to what God holds as valuable, doesn't it? As Christians, we know that without Christ, we can do nothing. God wants us to depend upon him and his mercy and isn't impressed by anything that we can do, the works of our hands. The Lord has said, woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you. And instead, he tells us that God will choose those things or individuals that are weak, foolish, base in the eyes of most others. One good example of this can be found through the apostles Peter and John when they were being tried for the healing of the lame man in Acts chapter 4 and verse 13. It says, now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, they is the Pharisees, the religious leaders, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Wouldn't it be good to be unlearned and ignorant, but to get everything we have from Jesus Christ? Therefore, we see that especially within the body of Christ, there should be no favoritism toward any individual above the rest. Such sentiments are expressed multiple times in Scripture, but this I will read from Matthew chapter 23, verses 8 to 12. But be not ye called rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren. And call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he that shall humble himself will be exalted. The sad thing is that we Christians keep on with this ungodly respect of persons just like the world will do, not considering the true instruction from God's word, and we've become partial in our judgments even toward our own brethren. But God has said there is no difference between us. Just listen to this from Romans chapter 3, verses 21 to 23. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifest being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all that believe, there is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Most of us realize that God regards all people equally, and he is clear concerning this respect of persons issue, but I invite you to check out the scriptures listed in the description below. Yet I think we can take a great lesson through the Apostle Peter, in the book of Acts chapter 10, when the Lord brought him together with the centurion Cornelius. And when Cornelius first welcomed Peter, he fell down at Peter's feet. But Peter refused this undue respect and physically took him up to prevent it. Now, if any early believer deserved respect, it would have to be Peter. 
And it was through his own lips, though, that shortly afterward, he proclaimed before all of those presents, present before them, of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation that feareth him and worketh righteousness, it is accepted with him. By all means, we should love our neighbors as ourselves, but Christians have only one master, the Lord Jesus, and we serve him through obedience to the truth of his word and by the leading of his Holy Spirit. Let us treat others well, for sure, but we need to test the spirits, for many false teachers have gone out into the world. We should seek the Lord diligently about how we are behaving in our regard for others, and he is the only one that we must please. I pray that God would bless this message to your use. Have a good day.